Good morning, Lake Michigan Christian Center. I'm so glad you could join us for our online service. I've got a great message about the vision for our church. But before we get to that, we've got an online meet and greet. During this meet and greet, can you do me a favor? Do at least two things. Like this video so we can expand our reach. And also send a link of this video to as many people as you know so we can get more and more people connected to our local church and to hear about the good news of Jesus. All right. I'll see you on the other side of the meet and greet. Good morning, Lake Michigan Christian Center. I'm so glad you could join us this week for our online service. This is a special weekend. In fact, I consider it one of the most important weekends of our church calendar because it is the weekend of our annual vision meeting. And so, again, many churches have their annual business meeting. We've chosen to call it an annual vision meeting because... Um, to me, the, the, when you go over the church finances, when you go over the church business, when you go over all that is going on at the church, everything should be done with an eye toward the vision. What are we all about as a church? What, where are we going as a church? In other words, all of the, the, the business and the finances of the church finds its meaning and purpose within vision. If you don't have vision, then suddenly the meeting devolves into just kind of going through, well, any business in the world tends to have these. But but I really believe it's important, as the scripture says in Proverbs, without a vision, the people perish. And this is an interesting vision meeting because it's the first one since the Lord really began to speak to me last October. Now, for some of you, this might be familiar. For others, this might be new. But last October, I went to visit my daughter in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. And we were going to a church in Durham. It was called Summit Church. And at this church service, and it was a very large church service, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people go there. Extremely large church service. And so I was just going to receive. You know, this is the first time in a while as a pastor, I didn't have any expectations on me. And I was able just to kind of receive and worship and in the word. But God really met with me. God met with me in two distinct ways, okay? One was during the worship time at the end of the service, uh, the worship team, and in particular, one of their worship team leaders, Brandon Murphy, uh, just really ministered to me. The anointing of God was on his life in such a powerful way that I found myself weeping at the altar uncontrollably. And again, this was an altar call for salvation. But I just felt to go up there and, and God just really began to refresh me and really began to minister to me in a powerful way. And I felt like the Lord spoke to me when I was at that altar in, 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 and it went something like this. See how tired you are right now? See how much you needed this refreshing? See how... Um, you are needing this ministry right now just very desperately after a long season of ministry. The people in, this, in your church need this. They need a refreshing. And you need to begin to bring this to our church. And the second thing that the Lord spoke to me was during the announcements. And again, how many times does God speak to people during the announcements? 
But as they went through the typical announcements for the church, they kind of nonchalantly mentioned that they've got a vision to plant a thousand churches. And that just went off in my spirit. I mean, I'm thinking to my, <laughs> hey, I'm just trying to fill the sanctuary on a Sunday morning. And here's the church that's got a vision to plant a thousand churches across America and across the world. And it felt like, hey, what are you doing, pastor? <laughs> what vision do you have? And so I felt that beyond a vision for bringing renewal to our church, the Lord spoke to me about church planting and multiplying our church and reproducing every ministry at our church so that we could plant other churches. So I left that weekend, again, just visiting my daughter, with a twofold vision that, that dramatically altered the trajectory of my ministry at LMCC, and that is renewal and reproduction. Now, as I share this, let me back up a little bit. Uh, and the weeks and month or so prior to this, as I was running early in the morning uh, during the fall, some of the most beautiful times to run in the year, I had been praying and seeking the Lord and say, Lord, are there two or three things that we can begin to engage in as a church that would begin to pivot us toward revitalization? What are two or three things we could do? So, so when I got back from that weekend and I really felt like God was dealing with me, he began to bring to my remembrance what I had been praying for well over a month prior to going to North Carolina. And that is, what two or three things could we do to pivot our church and recalibrate what we are and what we're doing as a church to bring us to a point of revitalization. And I really believe that the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, renewal and reproduction, reproduction of ministries, reproduction of churches is the vision that God wants us to move toward as a church. So I want to share a little bit more about that. I've already shared, I think, a time or two uh, at our online service, but I want to give, I want to kind of dig down a little bit deeper to express what all this means, okay? So when we're talking about renewal, uh, what I've sensed to do is to bring in worship teams or speakers that specifically will bring the presence of the Lord in such a tangible way that we are renewed. Now, I'm all for teaching. For goodness sakes, if you've ever heard me, that's what I do. I am a teacher. But I felt like there's another dynamic we need to bring in, and that, that is people that can preach and bring the power, the presence, the anointing of God, signs, wonders, miracles, things of that nature. We need this, all right? But not as an end in itself, but, and again, I'm not saying that preaching is not a powerful end, and I'm not saying that worship is not a powerful end. It is. But there's a means by which uh, that, that, that worship and that preaching and that renewal, in other words, there's an end that the means of worship and the means of preaching is to point us toward, and that is reproduction, church planting, preaching the gospel. And, and the scripture that God quickened to me this past fall was in 1 Kings 19 as Elijah is basically running for his life, sulking, complaining to God, right? Because he thought there was going to be this incredible revival when the Lord answered by fire. And not only was there no revival, but um, Jezebel is threatening his life. And so he's, he's kind of making his way away from all that was going on in Israel and moving toward the desert and moving toward uh, the Negev, right? And the scripture tells us that as he's there at, you know, this edge of the wilderness, God begins to meet with him and an angel begins to minister to him and speak to him. And one of the things that God said as this angel came was take and eat because this journey is too much for you. So there was another ministry that, that Elijah had. There was a future vision that God had for him. There were things for him to do. But in order to get to that place where he could truly hear from God and begin to do it, he needed to take and eat. He needed to receive strength. He needed to receive renewal so he could continue on this journey. And he goes all the way to Mount Sinai. So he's moving another 100 or so miles further into the desert. And he does so on one meal. So that one meal from the Lord sustained him and allowed him to come into his destiny and his purpose. 
And so that's what I sense God bringing us toward, okay? So I want to talk a little bit more in depth today about renewal and reproduction, okay? So when we talk about renewal or renewal theology, what are we talking about, okay? And specifically, renewal theology is the quest to view all of life and all of knowledge through the lens of the revitalizing work of the Holy Spirit. So, so whatever we are and whatever we do, make sure we're revitalized by the presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, there's a number of scriptures in the New Testament that I could have chosen to illustrate that. I'm just choosing two. Okay, the first one is Romans chapter 15, verse 13, which Paul says, May the God of your hope so fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the experience of your faith, that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound and be overflowing, bubbling over, with hope, is that you could be so filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit that you're just bubbling over with hope. That is a great expression of renewal, isn't it? Is to be in the presence of God, to experience the presence of the Holy Spirit, that the net effect of that is you're overflowing with hope, right? And again, I'm reading from the Amplified Bible here. <clears throat> so look at Acts chapter 4, verse 31. This is the NIV. It's talking about how the presence of the Holy Spirit fell so strongly on the apostles that they were empowered to preach the gospel. Look what it says, Acts 4.31, And they prayed. The place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God boldly. So the Spirit of God came on them so much that they could not help but speak the word. They could not help but preach the gospel boldly. That's, that, that's what renewal does, right? That, that's this idea of renewal, being filled with the Holy Spirit so much that it fills you with hope, it fills you with confidence, it renews you, it strengthens you, but the purpose is not just to consume it on yourself, but to then turn around and go and preach the gospel boldly. And of course, we see this in Acts 1.8 which says, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost bounds of the earth. So, so the, the filling of the Holy Spirit, the, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was a means to a greater end. God was trying to empower his people. He called them to do a supernatural work, to bring the gospel locally, but also to the ends of the earth. Well, guess what? If you've got, you got a supernatural calling, you have to have a supernatural empowerment to do that calling. That's what this renewal is destined to do. That's what I believe, and that's the why behind the what, of why we're bringing in someone like Brandon Murphy on March 1st, on a Friday night. That's why we're bringing someone, uh, again, the North Point worship team on April 5th. <clears throat> that's why we're bringing uh, evangelist and, and minister Alex Hennis on Sunday, May 5th of this year. Again, for the purpose of bringing the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit to renew us, to refresh us, but that so that we can go out and share the gospel with power. And so, again, how does this happen? Again, the, the way renewal is experienced is through the presence of the Lord coming. And again, times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord come most vividly during times of worship. Okay, so I want you to turn to a few more scriptures that talk about this renewal, okay? What we're trying to, to, what we're trying to experience as a church so that we can turn and pivot and start doing what God is calling us to do. Okay, so I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 to 18, okay? Familiar scripture, hopefully to many, but it says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the, glory, the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. So there's a transformation that takes place as we behold the Lord, as we behold the Lord and in his presence. And one of the greatest ways that we behold the Lord and in his presence is through praise and worship. All right. And one of the keynote scriptures that talks about this is Psalm 100, verse 2 and verse 4. It says this, Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. So there's something dynamic that happens when you enter his gates with thanksgiving in your hearts and you enter his courts with praise. You begin to sing and it ushers in the presence of the Lord. But the beauty of that 
presence is that it renews us, it refreshes us. And we capture some of this meaning in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. And it essentially says this, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew, there's that word, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not grow faint. And so it's interesting that renewal is connected to waiting on the Lord. Okay, This waiting is not just kind of, okay, God, I'm just sitting here. When are you going to do something? Right? It, it's not a passive thing. It's actually very active. It's like waiting on someone at a restaurant, right? When you're waiting on someone, you're serving them, right? You're ministering to them. So how do you wait upon the Lord? How do you minister to the Lord? Well, through praise and worship. As you begin to exalt him, as you begin to declare his praises, as you begin to lift him up, guess what? That begins to minister to the Lord, but the net effect of that or the consequence of that is your strength is now renewed, right? So, so now you're mounting up with wings as eagles so that you can run and not grow weary, so you can walk and not faint. So, so the call of God for us to multiply churches, the call to multiply ministry, well, there's a lot of work involved, right? There's a lot of sweat equity <laughs> that's involved in that. And of course, we're empowered by the Spirit, but we need strength to do that. Well, guess what? As we begin to worship the Lord in singing, as we begin to enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise and ministering to the Lord or waiting on the Lord, guess what? We'll, we'll have our strength renewed. We'll, we'll have our joy renewed. We'll have our motivation renewed. We'll have the wherewithal to begin to run the race that God has called us to run. Isn't that incredible? So that's why we're doing this. That's why we're, ta- we're, we're setting aside special seasons of worship where the only agenda that evening is to be with the Lord. Again, not for a self-serving thing, but rather for times of refreshing. And in fact, times of refreshing in the presence of the Lord is our rightful expectation if we're walking with Jesus. In fact, it says this in Acts 3.19. It says this, Repent, therefore, and be converted, so that your sins may be blotted out. So it's an indication of you have repented, you've become a Christian, you are serving Jesus, okay? But look what happens. It says, if you do that, it says, so that when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. There's a refreshing that comes when we're in right relationship with the Lord. That should be our expectation as Christians. And that word there for refreshing is the Greek word anapsukio, which refers to a soothing or a cooling. It refers to a blowing that comes on us, like a refreshing wind. That word is also the same word in the Greek, in the Old Testament, uh, uh, in the Greek translation of the Old Testament. It's referred, it's referring to the soothing that came upon Saul as a result of David's music. Remember, the scripture tells us that as David played (laughs) the harp, uh, the evil spirit that was upon Saul began to leave him, and he was soothed. His his emotions calmed down. In other words, there's a refreshing that comes from the presence of the Lord, okay? All of that, all of that is designed to give us what we need for the journey. Eat, for the journey is too much for you, okay? So that brings us to the second part of this vision, and that's reproduction, right? This idea that God is a missionary God. He wants to reach the world, right? And so he sends his church out to do that, okay? This is new for us as a church, not evangelism. We've done that for years. We've done that for decades as a church. But planting new churches, reproducing every ministry in our church so that we can in turn send some of those people out to plant a new church. That's very new for us. Experiencing the presence of God is something we kind of all are really familiar with. But planting a church is like, whoa, that's a true act of faith here, right? (laughs) We're going to have to step out in faith. So we need strength. We need refreshing to do that. And the reason we're called to do that is because God is a missionary God, right? To go into all the world and preach the gospel, right? In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost bounds of the earth, uttermost bounds of the earth, right? That calls for more than one person. That calls for more than one church. That calls for more than one church 
movement. That calls for a whole host of churches that are multiplying and going throughout the world. That's the, that, that's the global vision that Jesus gave his people before he departed and, and went to heaven. Jesus said it this way in John 20, 21. He says, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And that word sent is the Greek word uh, apostolken, which is where we get our word apostle or apostolic. So the call to reproduce churches the call to multiply, the call to extend the kingdom through church multiplication is the call to become an apostolic people. Now, again, let me qualify what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the office of apostle, but I'm talking about the function of an apostle. An apostle was someone sent, excuse me, someone sent by a king uh, to, to go and to do business on the king's behalf or maybe extend that kingdom into another region. That's what mean, being apostolic is all about. And that's part of this calling that God is, is challenging us to do and be about as a church. So I've been challenging our ministry leaders. I've been challenging them, hey, what could we do to multiply your ministry? What could you do? I've given them a thought experiment. I'll give it to you. If we started a new church service, either within house or in the outer area of our community. What would you need to do to multiply your ministry so that when that new service was started, you could send people you've trained up and do it, and you could continue in your ministry here at the main campus at LMCC? What would you need to do, right? That's a thought experiment. That's reproduction. That's multiplication. Again, we take it from what the scripture says in John 20. As Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. So that takes a, a, a really um, a radical paradigm shift for so many of us because we think church is all about coming and receiving from God on a Sunday morning at a building. And God is telling us, yes, that's great, that's wonderful. However, you need to expand that. You need to extend the territory of the kingdom through the multiplication of new small groups through the multiplication of ministries, through the multiplication of church campuses, through the multiplication of church plants. This is the paradigm shift that we are moving toward as a church. And again, it requires multiplication. This is exactly what Paul says to Timothy in 2 Timothy 2.2 when he said this, And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses entrust to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. So there's four different groups of people he's talking about. He's talking about himself imparting to Timothy. Timothy then imparts to a third group. These are the many witnesses, right? And they're, you're, you're entrusting what you learned to reliable men, right? That's the third group. And then the fourth group are those that are qualified and they can also begin to teach others. The others are the fourth group. Again, generation, if you will. That's multiplication. That's what I am challenging everyone who is involved in a ministry at LMCC to be about as a church. And again, the thought experiment goes something like this. If we have a second service at LMCC, we've got to do that. What would you do to get there? Okay, so as I conclude this morning, the vision of LMCC is st simply this. If I could kind of just... Share it in bullet point form. Partnering with God to bring refreshing to the local church and to extend the kingdom through some form of church multiplication or church planting. That's the vision. That's what we're moving toward. And so this is very exciting. This is very new. And so I'm praying for all of you that are watching this. And maybe you're caught a bit flat-footed, and this is new for you. I'm praying that God would give you flexible wineskins to receive what God is calling us to do. I'm also going back to the original sermon that I preached when I first came to LMCC the first week in March 2016, and the challenge went something like this. Are you a quitter? Are you a camper? Or are you a climber? Which one are you, right? This vision calls for ascending Christians. This vision calls for climbers. There's a temptation to quit. There's a temptation to camp. 
But what God is calling us to do is to move from those times and seasons where you want to just camp and you love the status quo to let's go and walk on water and see how the Lord is going to bring renewal and reproduction to this church. How we can multiply ourselves and become a church planting church. That's a big vision, but our God is a big God. And if he's calling us to do it, we can do it. So let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this vision. It's a vision of renewal. It's a vision of reproduction. It's a vision of being refreshed as a church family for the purpose of getting involved on a journey, getting involved in planting churches, getting involved in reproducing everything we are and everything we do as a church. So Father God, I pray, give us grace. Father God, give us flexible wineskins. Father God, let us be a people of faith to say, yes, Lord, if you're calling us to do this, we are willing to do it. And I pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, church, it was great to be with you. And until next week, I call you blessed.